Now, Australia is also taking real action on climate change and we're getting results. We are successfully balancing our global responsibilities with sensible and practical policies to secure our environmental and our economic future. Now tonight, tonight, my friends, I can report that based on the advice I have from the party officials, we have every confidence that we will form a coalition majority government in the next time. Uh, this is not an easy day for many people in this building. Leadership changes are never easy for our country. Uh, my pledge today is to make this change as easy as I can. If Mr Abbott is sincere about this offer, then he needs to make it very clear that he is talking about working with the government on offshore processing generally, not on his narrow solution. In the coming week, people across Tassie, like Australians across our whole nation, will be joining in celebrations for Australia Day. Some on the back verandas of their home, some with friends and family at the beach, some at picnics and barbecues in parks and neighbourhoods across the state, and some are taking part in events organised by local communities across the state, including here in Tassie. 2005 has seen the good heart of Australia very much on display. Our generous, overwhelming response to the tragic tsunami, the great work of our medical teams in Archay, and more recently the wonderful work of our medical army teams in Kashmir, helping the victims of the Pakistani earthquake. Mr Speaker, we know what he said, and what he said is, is the same sort of thing the Shadow Treasurer said before Christmas when he advocated order, up to... Order. Well, don't be too noisy over there. Yeah. Yeah. Order. The Listen, Deputy Leader of the you're Opposition. So macho, you're so macho. Twice you've had a chance to take the Opposition leadership. The first time you rang your friend next to you and offered it to him. This, this time you sat overseas while John got it from Hawke's Nest. We have confirmed the strength and the enduring nature of the relationship between our two great countries, a relationship which, as I was able to say in Congress and confirm with the President, is based upon a shared commitment, uh, principles which we regard as fundamental to the operation of a free and open society. And under the Fraser Anthony government, Australia has won a respected pace in world affairs. And while achieving all this, we've enhanced the dignity and self-esteem of those in need. Australia is the best place in the world to bring up a family. And we're going to keep it that way. Let there be no mistake about the gravity of Mr Fraser's intention. Parliamentary democracy is a complex and fragile thing. Around the world, it is under challenge. And now it is being challenged in Australia by the very man who professes to be a man of principle. It's a strange thing, but I'm not... Everyone seems to think I'm a person of tremendous ambitions. I don't think I am. I'm a tremendous worker. And if I'm given a job to do, I work at it. And if it takes me to uh, some other goal, and it's a goal of a kind that most people in the world would like, or most people in Australia would like, of course I'm glad when I've got there. It is not going to be an easy task for me. But to Australians, I would now say this in this moment. They can be sure that I will try my best and I will look to them for the strength successfully to conclude what we start.
which from within myself alone, I think I could not get. But I have told Mr. McMahon that neither I nor my country party colleagues would be prepared to serve under him as Prime Minister. Although the air of Canberra is chill and brisk as it so often is, our welcome is warm and tremendously sincere. Mr. President and Mrs. Johnson, welcome to Australia. I will not give the people any undertaking which cannot be fulfilled without disaster and harm. I will take no risk with either inflation or depression. Labor believes that its great responsibility is to the people and it believes that only Labor can protect the interests of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, I deem it quite an honour to appear before you this evening as Minister of State for Trade and Customs to introduce to you an all-Australian talkie program produced by FD Film Studios for the entertainment of Australian picture lovers. The war in the Pacific has now raged for more than two years. When it commenced, the whole of the Australian forces that had been trained were in the Middle East with all their equipment. Overnight, as it were, the freedom and safety of Australia was subjected to dire peril. I appreciate the great honour to be Prime Minister of Australia. I have been elected to this task under most extraordinary circumstances and times. At this juncture I can do no more than promise my wholehearted ability and conscientious contribution uh, to the winning of the war and towards the maximum war effort for Australia. Australia, some people say, is trailing at the heels of imperialist America. All I need say is that Australia is British and has a great and tried and common family allegiance under the crown. But Australia knows, and so do the communists, that the closest concert between the United States and the British Commonwealth is vital to the common defence. We people of Australia, like you people of this great and loved motherland of ours, have one supreme task, to defeat the enemy and to save civilization. Though there are many fronts, there is only one war. So Australia has sent her sons and daughters, her munitions, her raw materials and her food supplies to every front of this world war. We hope and pray that we can do more. It has been a great experience to me to visit Britain, the country from which we of the Dominions have inherited most of our traditions and most of our customs. I had been prepared for something beautiful, something old, something which possessed the glamour of the past and yet represented the forward movement of the modern world. I welcome this opportunity to speak to the people of Great Britain through the movie tone in you. Australia today is suffering from depression. The Australian government has inherited deficits from its predecessors, financial commitments, and we are told falling revenue. Attempts have been made in your country to belittle the credit of Australia, to suggest that investments will not be sound in this country because Australia has been governed by a Labour government. Let me assure the people of Great Britain that this government of ours will do nothing to destroy the great credit of Australia. It has as its great objective the improvement in our production and behind all is a determination by competitions of this character to bring up that efficiency but what is probably more important to ensure that we are going to produce for your market what you really want and not what we think you want. 
Our first duty as Australians is to Australia, to its industries, primary and secondary. But our next duty is to Britain, upon whose strength and power our safety and progress depend.